All right, now we can start. All right, so I am here with Riley Chase of, well, you know him fam more famously probably from Hostify, but you, we're actually going to talk about a couple of the other projects too that you started because uh, Hostify okay. is your most successful thing you started, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, so you got Hostify, Ghostify. I like, there's a, there's a naming scheme that you kind of <laughs> use a few different of them, which is kind of fun. Uh, but we'll actually, so we have a little bit of background. I've already done a video and uh, I've tested, used, and we've recommended quite a few times your product. That's kind of my first interaction. I usually start with, you know, I dig into the products someone makes and things like that. But then what also is interesting is how much you share. So I'm going to start by doing a screen share here. Uh, switch over to this desktop. and. I, the, you're a man off my own heart here. You share it all much in the way I do. Let's, let's talk about this. So, uh, your hardcore year, you start with losing a job and ended up building uh, software as a service company. So that's, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and tell me a little bit about that. Um, yeah, so it was kind of inspired by this guy in the Ukraine, um, Andre, that, uh, he, he invented the idea of hardcore year. But the reason I like the idea of hardcore year is, um, it's just sharing your story of like, going full-time on a business and committing full-time to it. And um, I think there's a, like, it's a, most of the business owners that are successful that I've talked to you, they all went through this period where the first year in business, they made less money um, and they struggled um, before, you know, the business started to take off and eventually they made as much money as they made before. And then they started making more money, but you know, there's kind of this dip and that's what hardcore year is about. It's going yeah. through that struggle. You know, it's in, I've been in business now 17 years, but I still fondly remember going from, you know, a great income at a really good job to starting my business 17 years ago and going, I don't make any money now. And for me, I didn't have startup investors. This is 2003 and I wasn't starting a software as a service company because no one knew what that was <laughs> back then. It existed, but it wasn't like a SaaS was not a common term and I was doing IT services, but you do, you go through this dip of, wow, I was doing uh, tech work and making good money to I'm broke. And now I'm leveraging all my assets and things like that to try to keep it afloat until you kind of uh, get over that. I think my big learning experience was I thought having skill meant I would have work. Turns out those are 100% different things, uh, the marketing and to get there. And I think you probably learned some of the same. So you started working on this uh, as a coding project, right? Because you were learning how to code and well, getting learning how to write the software around uh, the Hostify system. Yeah, I think an important part of it is that I didn't start hardcore year by quitting my job and then trying to figure out what I was going to do next. It was like, I already had this thing Hostify that I had been working on for six months. I had gotten it to almost 100 customers. It was only like $2,400 a month revenue and only like half of that was like profit that I actually take home after expenses. So it was just like not like enough money to survive on really for me, but it was just barely there where it was like, if I do some freelancing or like if I, you know, I know what I need to do to find more customers and if I put more time into this, I know I can grow it. So, um, and you know, I had ex a few years of experience trying to build an IT service business before that. So I knew that, you know, I wasn't going to just quit my job and then try and figure it out because it takes a, it takes a long time to get traction. Yeah, that's uh Getting the traction is really one of the key parts of this too. That's, I think the, um, it, it took so long before even I built my own little, you know, especially specifically found IT services, you build that whole recurring revenue from customers or just customers calling you back and things like that. Um, and I, this is that question everyone asks, it's kind of, it was somewhat maybe not fortunate, but you did, like you said, you got fired from your job disagreement with the employer, uh, which yeah. It allowed you the opportunity to end up being full time at this. And I think that's everyone's question when they start a business is, do I quit my job or start my business? And I, the challenge in that is I, I've heard a couple different arguments. I've seen like all the inspirational quotes. I think one of the things that happens is when you don't have a plan B and like for me, I don't have a family that had money. When I decided to start my business, there wasn't like another option. It wasn't like you know, as I'm already established, I already moved out and I owned a house and I had a family. There wasn't like, what do I do next? So you put your whole heart into it because it becomes, well, I can't just go, well, I don't have to work on it today because my day job pays my bills. And I think that's probably what kicked you into overdrive right then, right? Yeah, I think it, I think, um, it would be a lot different if I was still working at my full-time job. I don't, you know, I think it would definitely be a lot different. And I, I do feel lucky that I was fired at the time. It was just shocking and it was scary and it was yeah. unbelievable. 
But, um, you know, I think leading up to this, I had in my mind, um, a lot of time I had in my mind that, you know, I'm making six figures at my day job. And when Hostify makes more than that, then I'll switch to doing that full time. But that's really, I learned is, you know, that's really the wrong mindset because, um, it's just, I don't know if it would ever get to there. If, if you have that mindset where you're waiting for it to be bigger, uh, and not putting your, all your time into it, like you said. Yeah. And I, I've actually watched uh, numerous friends kind of come and go in that. Cause there are people that work in tech space. They start a hobby project. Uh, one of them, one of my friends was building some gaming servers, but his job was more important. He has a really good paying job. He had great benefits and he just, there's no real kick to leave there because they like yeah. him. He liked his day job. So he yeah. kept kind of like putting it off and putting like two weeks at a time. He just not even log in and touch stuff. He go, Oh, the server went down, but you know, I got enough money that I, I'm not going to deal with it. it. The whole thing crashed because some guy hacked me and I'm, I'm going to deal with it later. And then he eventually his whole uh, gaming as a service business that he was hosting service for failed because he, it is, he, he just was very honest for drinking after the bar one day. He's like, yeah, yeah I, he goes, I just don't care enough. <laughs> you know, but when it suddenly is your income, like this is do or yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. You put that, you wrap that passion right up in it at that point. Like you said, not having a plan B, I, I never applied to a job. Um, a job listing since I lost my job, still haven't applied to a job, don't have any plans to do now. But early on, of course, when you're making a thousand dollars a month and then the next month you're making like, you know, a little bit more money and a little bit more money, it's like, you know, you know, maybe I should get a job and you know to hold me over. But no, I always was like, no, I'm going full time on this for one year. And at the end of that one year, that's why the hardcore year thing, at the end of the year, if this was, you know, still not making that much money, I'm gonna go get a other job and it'll go back to being a side project. But, you know, um, it did work out luckily, so I'm still doing it. So let's dig, let's dive in a little bit of technical. You have learned probably more about the MongoDB and the way Unify uses it than anyone else I know. Uh, yeah. we, we've talked a couple times uh, messaging back and forth and, you know, you're looking at it differently than me, a user of Unify, and I'm more into the network engineering, but um, someone else, my friend Phil, when we were looking at the way Unify gets stood up, because he has some of it on him, and he's, he's a uh, DevOps guy, he started digging into, he goes, why do they do MongoDB like this, and looking at the tuning, and then you you probably go, it's kind of the same things, like, you're like, oh man, you because to do it at the scale, how many, you have, I, I'm going to assume right now you're over 40,000 devices, overall attached and, uh, we're over forty-five thousand ubiquity devices connected to uh over 850 servers that i'm okay. managing with one other person <laughs> yeah yeah so you you've had to do a lot of tuning uh for some of your singular servers with larger installs um how was that reverse engineering without a roadmap for ubiquity that's because i'm sure their engineers don't just hand over documentation to you right <laughs> no so um so yeah like you said it's reverse engineering it's uh <laughs> Not easy. It's um, basically, you know, every program that I've written to automate something in Unify, it came from opening up Chrome, clicking buttons the way you're supposed to use the, uh, you know, inside the dashboard. You click a button, you watch what network request was made, and then you figure out that API request. And, um, you know, Ubiquity doesn't provide any documentation on these things. Same thing with MongoDB. I looked up um, how to use MongoDB. What are all the commands for MongoDB? How do you tune it? How do you um, scale it? And, um, you know, this is how I learned about these things was reverse engineering, just figuring out, going through the database, oh, here's where they stored that record, let's fix that or change that, or if we change this setting in Unify, it changes this thing in the database, so what if I just change the database directly, that way I don't have to have an admin account to go to Unify, so it's a lot, it's a lot of time, a lot of time of just looking at it. Yeah, and that's, that's the uh, little, re the hacking aspect, and to me, yeah. um, the, the hacking mindset and the business mindset are the same, because you're basically not accepting the rules that were handed to you that you just set it up this way. Um, the same with business. If you're an employee, you just accept the rules. These are my tasks. This is what I'm assigned to do. When you are doing a startup and you have a new idea, you're bending the rules around. To me, they're one and the same. Uh, my hacking background and my business background, people are like, well, you know how to hack stuff and you do business. I'm like, they're not any different. It's just under, it's just taking rules, seeing how they may apply to me and seeing how they don't or seeing how I want to use them in a new way. Um, and that's the, the Unify thing is a cool one because I think you had this right collision of right place, right time. We're watching yeah. Unify over the last couple of years really take off as a product. Um, even some of the large sales places that we do. I mean, we've, so we've done some of these installs where we've done single site installs of over 300 devices and, wow. uh, it's, it's been crazy for us because we do the infrastructure layout and the design and 
the, some of these companies, when you talk about having 300 of them, if you switch to any other company that has licensing fees, that's a lot of licensing fees. Yeah. And as uh, a CEO of one company told me, he goes, I I'm getting a hundred dollar license fee to death. He goes, it sounds, it goes, it all sounds inexpensive. He goes, until you look at my monthly bill of $28,000 a month in fees yeah. across all the products we have. He goes, at some point, um, that's this is, and that's why I think Unify really took off. And at the same time, um, Unify, although they let they give you the controller for free, they're one of the only companies that doesn't seem to have a clear, like they did offer, but as your uh, blog pointed out not that long ago, they kind of killed off all their own hosting options for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did write a blog post about that. And I think it's really coming straight down from the CEO, Robert Para. And if you read his blog, um, he blogs about being anti-cloud. And, you know, it's kind of the disruptive model that his business is built on, not having licensing, giving the software away for free. But, um, you know, the drawback of that is, you know, when you're an MSP or when you're a company with more than a few locations, having a controller at every location, keeping it updated, keeping it secured is just not an option. And so um, he's definitely taking the approach that he wants to sell you that one more hardware thing to go with your Unify set for every site. But um, I think it's uh, not understanding what the MSP or what the, the enterprise needs and, um, in the, and that's centralized management. So. Yeah. That, and uh, for us, you know, we are, my background is DevOps. I have other staff here that is as well. So we don't mind hosting it ourselves, but then other MSPs we talk to, and this is what one of the reasons Hostify was so interesting to me was there's people who contact us. We one off will manage their servers for them, but obviously that gets tedious. And I'm like, look, if you want this done right, Hostify. And you know, I vetted your product and said, okay, this is the way to do it because you either are internally a DevOps team or you don't have one. And some MSPs, even if they're bigger, they may not have someone who understands how to manage a Linux server, how to tune a MongoDB server. And we're doing it only for ourselves. So make no mistake for anyone listening is Tom, will you manage it for me? No, I'm going to point you over to Hostify. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, because honestly, it's not our thing. We like managing for ourselves and things like that, but some MSPs just don't have that. They're, especially because they're usually really Windows heavy um, really yeah. weird because we actually use Linux here and Windows. Um, so we don't mind doing it, but uh, I think that's just like, it's a perfect service. And it kind of surprised me because it feels like it was a gap that Unify just said, well, we're not going to do this. But of course, famously, Microsoft's known for that. They, they've leave, they leave gaps in their uh, product offering and just kind of say, all right, third parties, Go ahead. This is the gap we left in the market. We host email, but we don't have a wonderful spam filter. So we're going to let third parties do better spam filtering than us, even though we host your email. So um, Unify did the same thing. They decided not to make the hosting available and automate it as you can make it. So uh, you filled that gap really well. Now, go ahead. Uh, tell me real quick. Is there... Um, is there any issues? I, I don't know uh, if there's something legal we can't say on here, but has Unify have been upset with you about this in any way that directly? Oh yeah. Um, so it's interesting. <laughs> Our relationship has changed over time. Um, I've never really talked with them directly very much. Um, but you know, uh, how it started off was October, 2018. This was just a few months after I had started Hostify. Um, I received a cease and desist letter from their legal team and they said um, it was a lot of mumbo jumbo. And I was like, at first, you know, they made it sound like I can't continue doing Hostify because it's violating their whatever. And so I wrote them back and said, you know, what does this actually mean? And so they said, we don't want you to use the Ubiquity logo in your screenshots on your website. So I kind of figured out that they were trying to scare me off from doing it. But really, the only legal thing they had on me was I can't use their logo or something on my website. So I removed their yeah. logo. And then ever since then, I never heard from them. They have said, I wrote them back and said, I removed your logo. Is everything fine now? They said, yeah, it's fine. And then um, it was a few months ago, I received a letter from Robert Para, and he sent me uh, the Unified Dream Machine when it came out and thanked me for, um, you know, my great service with Hostify and everything. <laughs> so it was very confusing for me, but um, it was also confusing that he sent me the UDM, which can't connect to Hostify, and I, I never did take it out of the box. It's in the box right there. I won't, I won't <laughs> take it out of the box until it's remotely adopted. I have no use for it. My customers are returning them, so... Yeah, it was confusing. He didn't send me a UDM Pro, so I'm sure that my lack of review on the UDM is, uh, you yeah. know, not warrant me any future products that will be sent to me. But I do love his. I promote all his stuff. You know, I'm doing teaching everybody about his products and everything. I love the new Gen 2 switch. I just bought myself one. So, <laughs> yeah, and we're we're a huge fan of the products. I mean, uh, they they have. Probably one of the interesting, you know, the Unify software defined networking. One of the things that to me is a game changer about Unify is probably more their software and less their hardware. Obviously, the two are directly related to each other. Um, and like we just reviewed the Gen 2 Pro Switch, and I really like it. 
but where they're not as much of a game changer is in their pricing is good on their switches, but not killer. Um, but their software on the other hand for, I don't think I can, cause you know, me long time into network engineering, I will say the easiest platform I've ever set up VLANs in my life on and being teaching people how to do it is the Unify platform. Hands down, they just have a better way of handling it. And they have the nicest interface of any network equipment I have ever touched. And, you know, right. my old days of Cisco or any type of command line routers I did, I was just used to, you did it from the command line. If there was ever a UI, you didn't use it because it was not, it was well, well, it was not designed by the good guys. It was always uh, some half-ass, uh, really <laughs> interface. There's nothing beautiful about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when Cisco came out from the old ESA systems, and they had that, I think it was like this, the earliest ones were this weird Java launcher for a UI. You're like, yeah, I'm just going to the command line. This is literally it's harder than ESPM or something. Or uh, yeah. when they had the, those UC500s, they had a GUI thing for that too. Yeah, they're, and it's just like the fire, it's always been bad. Terrible. And here comes Unify. Yeah, you always just, go to the command line because the GUI is so bad on Cisco stuff. Like it, whether it's ASDM or the, or the, uh, the old UC 500 thing, I can't remember what it was called. Yeah. So, and it used yeah. that weird Java launcher thing or yep. something yeah. like that. So and you had to create objects for everything. I'm like, this is, this yeah. is hard. I just want, <laughs> so this is where Unify really stepped up the game. Um, and this is where they've also had their own missteps. They took that same UI and threw it on other things and it makes it unclear as to where their product path is going because the only place this little bit falls short is of course, as you know, the USG firewalls, which everyone asked me about. And it's just like, can, can you add some features? You have this beautiful interface, but right. a complete lack of features. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things. And um, you know, every day I talk to my MSP customers and um, I just send them to your video a lot actually on firewall comparisons for 2020 or 2019 or whatever, uh, PF Sense, Untangle, WatchGuard, yep, yep. Sophos, whatever. Uh, you want to use, but don't don't use the USG unless you're just throwing it at someone's house and you're not going to use IPS, IDS, or VPN, and you just need routing and switching in DHCP and, it's, and VLANs is fine for that. But yeah, and that's and that's what we've run into as well. And I just made a 2020 <laughs> uh, 2020 version of that video for that exact reason um, to highlight that yes, it's a year later, and features still haven't come to these. You still can't assign a block of IPs to a WAN address on a USG. I mean, that's a really really basic function that it seems like you should be able to sign, but here yeah, we that's, are that's 2020 and it doesn't work. Yeah. There's little things like that that are big things. <laughs> but yeah. They're little things, but they're really big things. So yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely some challenges, but um, yeah, anyways, that's enough about the Unify. We'll talk uh, lastly about a couple other projects. How are you, are you still pursuing, like, no, you're doing the UNMS and uh, that's the other side for those not familiar with the Unify Ubiquity product line, their other yeah. product line being the Edge series. So you got the UNMS going, that's going well? Yeah, it's going well. So um, a few thousand dollars a month, uh, we have about uh, 80 customers that use UNMS. So our business is really primarily Unify with almost 800 Unify servers, about 80 UNMS servers. So it's a small part of our business. And really what it is, is uh, it's a whole different audience. It's mainly wireless internet service provider operator businesses um, that are using UNMS. And then we have a few overflow where like an MSP has a lot of, you know, nano station loco point to point connections out there and they want to manage those. But now I'm pushing our MSP customers to use the unified building to building bridge instead. So they can have everything in the unified dashboard because, you know, the MSPs use those point to point connections. But, but yeah, yeah, it's a small part of our business. We, we've been looking at some of those uh, unified bridges for the same reason. I'd love it to be in one dashboard because right now it's not. We don't really have to, we, we don't have any UNMS uh, set up because we're not as worried about monitoring because one thing I will say about them, man, those edge, the site to sites, they just work. They, that's another. Um, yeah, they just work. You just put them in. But, um, you know, one nice part is it does the config backups from the devices. So you get that in case the device dies, you can swap out the config. You have uh, monitoring and you can also push firmware updates to your devices. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's the one convenience of it is being able to push the firmware updates. So yeah. um, maybe we'll have to look at that because the UNMS, uh, is that using MongoDB in the background too? I've no, never oh really my gosh. It. So UNMS is an amazing stable product. You can, it has Let's Encrypt built into it. You can do oh, the really? updates from inside the web interface. You just click the update button instead of having to do the command line. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's built on Docker and Postgres database. I'm sure you can put a million records in there and it's not going to collapse. Unlike MongoDB, you have enough clients connecting on your network. It, it, once it gets to around a million records, the thing falls apart and you got to clear the database of all the records. And it just can't, no matter how much hardware I throw at it, no matter, no matter how much tuning I do, it has limitations, software limitations for how many records it can sort and everything. 
Like, yeah, I, mean, I was really surprised they went with Mongo because of that. I, Mongo is just my, my DevOps friend. Something seen is built on Mongo. He's like, why? Right. Because <laughs> you know, I think the reason why is because it's built for a Cloud Key Gen One. Is or I don't know. I guess they had Unify before that, but it seems like it. You know, it's a it's a choice for an embedded device. Something simple for an embedded device to run on a simple processor. You know. Yeah, so I think it just wasn't thought for scalability. It's thought for simplicity, yeah. but not for scalability. That's probably the simple answer. <laughs> Yeah, I wish they would rewrite it like UNMS. The UNMS is, you know, newer and has better, better stuff for sure. It seems a lot more stable. In Postgres, much more, much more flexible, much more stable. Um, now you hired someone this year. Is it this year or late last year? It was when, last year. Uh, August to September is when he started full time. Okay. Yeah, from you is that going well? Oh, it's amazing. He's such a great guy. Um, Safwan, maybe I'm sure he's listening to this. Um, yeah, he... Uh, He's been doing really good. Um, he pretty much handles 90% of the day-to-day -day support side of the business. And so now I've been concentrating on just building relationships with people. I'm doing uh, demos and talking with our customers, learning more about their businesses and telling people about Hostify and spending more time on that than doing the support side. So that, it's, been it's a real key step whenever you're growing the business. And uh, it is one of the videos I've done before as well is that is it's a, such a common question. Well, how'd you hire your first person? And I always tell people, you don't really think of it in that way. You think about it when you've compartmentalized enough processes that you can assign them to someone. Because if you just hire someone on day one, they're like, hey, boss, now what? And you're like, crap, I actually have to tell them what to do. But you should have processes to hand them. So that's always the, and you seem pretty process oriented. I think that lends to when you're programming, you already have this compartmentalized, yeah. this compartmentalized. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, here's, here, I'm handing you off this part. When they call, answer it, they're going to have problems with the product. These are the general problems. Here's the task list managed by exemption to forward it up to me. Um, once you can put that around someone, that's when you hire someone. That's the, that's kind of the key to it sometimes. But it yeah, really frees up your time to grow the business. Hiring my first person, um, it was the most difficult thing I've probably ever done. Like as far as the business, definitely the most difficult part of the business was um, trying to figure out what I'm doing and turn it into processes. I actually wrote a whole blog post about how I create a process for every single thing that we do here and, um, you know, wrote, it, wrote guides on it. And, um, you know, and that's, you know, that's how, how I was able to hand it off. You know, every time a new ticket would come in, I'd create a new process. And then whenever something similar came in, you know, I'd refer to that process, send him the article with that. And, you know, the, I'd actually film myself a Zoom um, doing it. And then when something similar came, you know, he would watch the video. And then eventually that turned into written guides. And then now it's like really, really good processes that we have. So, you know, we, I, uh, I worked in the automotive space, so we were ISO certified. So we had, we had like the really regimented forms and process for everything. So for me, it was kind of, I took those same form processes and just brought process oriented stuff, making task lists and things like that versus some people come in IT. And I think that's why they struggle with the question so much. Um, and just, it's a kind of a business problem in general. If you're not thinking about process, you're just kind of chaotically running the business and doing everything like I try to hand things off but it's hard because I've never created a documented process to hand to someone else you know this really the bigger success of any franchise business is it's just a collection it's a book of processes here's your McDonald's it's this it's it's step one through 300 right through here <laughs> that should be the goal of any business have you ever read the book uh e-myth revisited that one really helped me a lot to uh yes. to understand I, I'm, I'm old enough to have read it first and I read the <laughs> revisited run later um, uh, yeah, yeah. No, but the E-Myth Revisited, someone recommended it to me when I was going through this and man, it was, it's, it's a great book. It's yeah. probably, um, I, I would probably put it on, I need to do a book list and I would probably be right at the top of them. Uh, book list. Yeah. There's that. I, I won't ramble off every one of them, but there's, um, there's a handful of good entrepreneur books. Um, yeah, that's probably another blog post I should do sometime. All the ones <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll read, I'll read that one. But, yeah, that's uh, definitely there. And then, and I brought the employee things. I knew you wrote a whole blog post because that's one thing I will say. Uh, a, a, anything I don't say in this interview, you have dumped a lot more in a series of blog posts uh, about, well, all kinds of different steps to this, you know, hiring and things like that. You've been very transparent, which um, is obviously greatly appreciated. And like I said at the beginning, this is something I do as well, being very transparent about how we do things and everything else. Uh, the last little couple things I'll talk about is some of the other projects you had. I, I yeah. think I got the concept of Ghostify. Are you still doing that one? No, so and, uh, it was last June or so that, you know, I kind of got uh, carried away with all these, I started all these different, I started uh, three different SaaS companies and I tried to start an MSP community. So, and then that was, you know, so I had Hostify and then I had these like other things that were 
not really making any money and they needed a lot of work to get off the ground and hostify at the same time was taking off for each month it was growing 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 and so it became very obvious to me that i had to put all my time into hostify and i started doing that around uh last summer and um definitely uh has been has been good so i i still have customers using ghostify i still have customers using captify not very many um and i still have a pretty good like 300 people in my msp story community on our slack channel but it, none of those things are things that i'm actively uh growing right now yeah so they're just kind of there that's um that's always hard too even for myself the businesses I've started over the years, I've had, I used to have a, a TV repair business in 2005 and six. There's no money in TV repair. So anyone that heard that, um, there's not a market <laughs> if I created by closing it, there's no market for that anymore. Um, but you do, you put a lot of time and effort in something. It's hard to kill off. It's like, is oh. even mentally you're like, but I spent so much time on it, but you're like, but nobody wants it or it's not as popular. The idea wasn't as good. And it's sometimes, uh, the best thing you can do though is accept it and go, I'm going to drop this section. Uh, I'm going to move on from this because I'm going to do better if I focus on these other things over here. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. A tough one. Yeah. That's, and it's never easy. It's always, always, anyone can put on the hindsight go, well, you should have got rid of that, you know, in 2007 time. I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that look, I can tell you that right now. Anyone yeah. can, but when you're living it, it's a whole lot harder, but uh, keeping the focus can be a, it's, it's a challenge because you want to start doing all the things, but, you gotta it's that's not an easy balance that's uh especially you're young so you you're still gonna you bump up and you're, you're how old are you right now 27 okay so you're about the same age as me when i started i think i was 20 i would have been 26 when i started my business and it was <laughs> you make more mistakes as younger i don't know it's just how it works out <laughs> but my, my my biggest regret though is i didn't start even younger so i could have made those mistakes even earlier and been further ahead but you know yeah such as life <laughs> Well, I'll leave links to where to find all the, about you. So obviously a lot of it starts at Riley Chase, but we talked about Hostify. Um, we have a affiliate link for that. I'll leave down below. So that's been uh, kind of cool. It's a service we do recommend. And all the other services we talked about, um, I'll leave links to all those in the description. But it was great talking with you in person here. Um, we've talked a lot on, you know, online through a few different formats. And we've definitely talked about all the previous things we talked about but uh yeah i wanted to i, I wanted to do this interview because i think a lot of people want to hear the story of how did you come up with it and how's it work and uh things like that so that's pretty cool i appreciate awesome. it great talking to you tom all right man thanks see ya and thank you for making it to the end of the video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more content from the channel hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like youtube to notify you when new videos come out if you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching, and see you next time.